Hi, I'm Doug Walker from Channel Awesome. At the end of our most popular show, Nostalgia Critic, we always do a charity shout-out encouraging people to donate. While they've done well, we realize not everybody's in a financial situation where they can give. But everybody at some point or another can give time. So every month we're gonna try and show a new charity or organization that you can help out with. There's so many people in difficult circumstances, but thankfully there's always people who are willing to help. And you can be one of them. Whether it's volunteering or lending a helping hand, we're here to show you what you can do. I'm David Diaz, I'm the development manager for Save a Pet, which is a, a no-kill animal rescue and adoption center in Grays Lake, Illinois. We've been in existence since 1972, so we're 46 years old, and we started in Palatine, and then in 1995 we moved here to our facility in Grays Lake. In what way does Save a Pet save a pet? Well, in 46 years we've served about 63,000 animals, and we serve about 1,000 animals on average a year. Uh, we deal with only cats and dogs. We are a true and pure no-kill mission here at Save a Pet. So we don't turn any animals away based on temperament or behavior, age, their history, their medical needs, uh, anything like that. We are totally inclusive of all animals and we do whatever it takes to set them on the road to recovery and adoption. They always say it's better to adopt rescues. Sure. Uh, Everyone says that, you Adopt, know, but, but uh, yeah, but but in your opinion, why is that just so incredibly important? Oh, well, it's so incredibly important because there are so many animals that need to be adopted. There are animals waiting to become part of your family and enrich your lives, and instead of going out and um, supporting someone who is breeding more and more animals, our philosophy is that it makes more sense for people to come adopt animals that are here already in need of home. Animals are very forgiving and they're very resilient and most of them have an open heart to new experiences and so when they feel that they have become part of that family they'll act in kind to that and so we have animals that have been bait dogs for fighting dogs, we have animals that have been in direct abuse situations or domestic abuse situations and things like that. We all go through life, right, and the life has different things that it throws at you like uh, you lose your job and you need to move to an apartment. You might not be able to include your animal. And so they'll bring their animal here and they'll relinquish the animal. So um, they've all these animals have had different unique experiences. They are able to make the adjustments to become, you know, part of that family in a really, really great way. That's Reginald. There you go. Big fur. Big fur. Toe paw. The tall paw? Sora. Toe paw. Oh, toe paw. Yeah. What information is there that you feel people don't know enough about that they should, about adopting a pet, getting a rescue, anything like that? They make wonderful family pets, and I think that some people are a bit standoffish of that. They're just like any other dog, whether you adopt or, um, or you purchase the dog, you know, they'll still find their role within the family. It's no different. It's just that these dogs have an immediate need to find a family. Some shelters and rescues, the adoption process is super easy peasy and they don't take a lot of things into consideration, but we're really interested in having a successful long-term adoption for that animal. If you're renting, uh, you should have your lease with you, stating that you can have an animal. We ask that at some point during the process, everybody who lives in the home comes in to save a pet and has an, an interaction with the animal. Is part of that because there's no rush, because there's not a fear that you know the animal's gonna be put down or anything like that, that you can take your time and really get the right animal for the right person? Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. We're in no rush. We don't take waiting lists and we don't hold animals for people. It's a first come serve situation. Uh, that being said, um, you know, we're just trying to have the most successful experience for the animal. I don't want to sound trite, but people are secondary to us in this process. It's really all about the animal. Uh, this is kind of special to us. This is called our tree of life. And this is where some of our major donors decide to buy a leaf and they add their name to be recognized as a major supporter of Save the Pet. This is not government funded. No, um, no zero so, so a lot of it comes from donations and, and people giving funds and stuff right. like that. But what is the major difference between uh, a place that maybe is government funded? Well, I mean, to be general about it, the expectations and the regulation of the operations and processes are totally different. If we were to take governmental funds, they would have an input and on our mission, which is 
uh, a pure no-kill mission and we just refused to waver from that. We get it done through individual donors and business partners who help us out with sponsoring different events and things like that. There's four or five different save -a pets throughout the world, but we serve Lake County and they're not affiliated with each other. Mm. Um, but they're all doing, uh, you know, animal welfare work. Uh, based on the name, I guess, why would you be a save a pet? Yeah, <laughs> that wouldn't make much sell sense. Sell water bottles or something. <laughs> and every once in a while, we'll get a donation for maybe a, the save a pet that's in Florida or something like that. And then we need to call the donor. And I'm always amazed at people's generosity because they say, you go ahead and keep that. And I'll just send another check to the save a pet in Florida, which is, is wonderful. For you, what is the best part of doing this? Well, I'm the development manager, so I have a big passion in helping people find, helping out what they're passionate about. It's like brokering a deal almost, right? You've got a donor here who wants to help out and wants to learn what they can do that will actually make a difference, right? And then we've got um, administration and leadership who needs to have costs covered. If we're going to put in a new parking lot, we need a new fence. So I really enjoy getting those two people in the same room and figuring it out with each other. Um, aside from that, seeing all the you know cute little animals around is mm -hmm. always a bonus. I have a lot of animals at home. They're all rescue animals. I, although I've adopted two animals from Save a Pet, um, I'm taking a break right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. What is your favorite pet? Oh, I'm a dog person. I personally like Australian Shepherds uh, just because of their personality and their energy and they just want to work. But I find myself as I'm getting a little bit older, I never thought I'd like little dogs. And now, like little Jack Russell Terriers and stuff, I really think they're adorable. I'm still trying to get on that boat too, man. I see a little dog, I'm like, you're not a dog. But yeah, I'm like, yeah. I know you are, but it's like, I've known people have had little dogs and they say the same thing, like, I hated them at first, but man, we get to know them. They're just yeah. wonderful animals. I, 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 you know, I gotta figure that out. To each their own. There's some people who like Mastiffs and St. Bernards and these big dogs, and then there's some people who can't imagine having that on their couch, right? Mm. They want just a little Pekingese or something you know like that um, what's great here at save a pet is that we've got all kinds of dogs or a cat for everybody here you just need to come in and make that connection and find out which one is for you what's well, one of the more either amazing or inspiring like pet stories that that's come through here or that you've seen oh my gosh there's this. so many like we see something every month that just kind of is a jaw dropper Willie Nelson uh, is a cat that came in that uh, suffered an accident out on the road it got hit by a car and somebody found it in a ditch and brought it to us three of its four Four legs were fleece. Basically the fur and skin was missing. Man. On three of the legs, most every other animal rescue shelter would find themselves in a position where they would make the choice, I think, to euthanize that animal. And we don't. And so we spent a lot of money on Willie Nelson. Um, went through recovery and is with a family today and you would have no idea that Willie had that experience at all. So like all the fur is back on his legs totally. and everything, just like that, that is crazy. It's totally crazy. He just looks like a normal cat. Just a normal cat bopping around and you know, he would jump up on the counter and you'd be like, nice cat. You just would have no idea. But they're, like I said, very resilient and you know, they just adapt and overcome. The show is very much based on, you know, volunteering and how people yeah. can help and stuff like that. Uh, what are some things people watching at home, if they wanted to give some time to save a pet in any way, yeah. what can they do? Well, first what they would need to do is uh, go through the orientation process and the training, which is very simple and fast. Um, and then there's a whole myriad of things people can do. They can come in and simply help clean the cat rooms in the morning. They could come in and walk dogs. They could bathe dogs. We have an agility course out back. They could teach agility to different dogs. We run a lot of off-site community outreach and fundraising events, so we're always looking for people to help take dogs and cats off-site to different events that are happening, volunteer for uh, fundraising committees to help us raise money, and they can bring their friends and family and, and turn them into volunteers and save a pet supporters as well. Some people would just donate like a bird feeder. If somebody's like, hey, I want to donate blank to yeah. save a pet. I mean, is that something they can do? They can contact you? And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, you can find my information on the website, uh, but you can email me or call me or just call the front desk and we can figure all of that out. But uh, literally on a daily basis, I talk to people who um, if maybe had a dog pass and they bring in all of his stuff, which is really a sad one. And then we've got somebody who just had the day off and they decide they're gonna go to a store and buy a hundred bucks worth of pet stuff and bring it to save a pet. That's cool. Uh, yeah, it's very cool. And we don't, we can't do it without people like that. 
So whether people want to volunteer, donate, give time, give money, whatever they want you to do, I want you to look right in that camera and tell them what website they can go to and what place they can go to. You need to go to www.saveapetil.org and you need to do that right now because these animals are counting on you. Thank you. And they are adorable. These are cute animals. We've Thank got some you cute so puppies. much, man. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> thanks for coming out today. We thank really you. Thank you for it. having us. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Thank you.